Well, that was just about it. There was uh, Delphi and uh, Hap had their place in Venice, and Hobie was in Dana Point. And uh, as you can see here, I was working out of my garage, and uh, in the balsa, early balsa days, that was about it. That was like uh, a big deal to get the balsa then, wasn't it? Well, that's where I had an edge. See, I was living close to General Veneer, which was the source of balsa wood. And uh, what I could do is uh, beat just about anybody over there and scoop up all the uh, light wood I could get my hands on and, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, get as much of that as I could. So I, I had a little bit of an edge there. The light wood being the more preferable wood for uh, a board. You know, we were, a lot of people don't realize it, but we were really weight conscious even back then. Mm -hmm. You were gluing it up earlier, and now you're, what, putting the plan shape on it, right? Right. This is kind of the, I mean, if you look closely at the temple templates here, you can see this is the... Uh, Early, early day Malibu board, which was uh, influenced by Joe Quigg and uh, Matt Kevlin and uh, Dave Rockland. And this is the, the routing machine you invented, as I recall, that like cut the bottom rocker out, right? Bottom and deck. Hobie had the first one, and the machine we just saw was actually the second machine in existence. And it was mostly all handwork, except for that, right? Right. What it did is it brought you a blank more like, you know, a foam blank looks like today. There was still all of the uh, shaping and the rails and uh, everything involved in it. You guys did the whole works then, right? Glassing, shaping, everything. From start to finish. 